welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. This is your host, Carter. Now what we have for you in this episode is a showdown. A Gigabyte R9-280X, a Gigabyte R9-270, and a Gigabyte R7-260X. Now first up in this showdown, we have the R7-260X. Very small form factor card, about $149. This was really modeled, when you look at the stats of it, around the 7790, very entry level, uh, moderate gaming graphics card. Not too often used for hashing, but we figured a few people out there have this card, wanna see kinda what it does with the right set of settings. Now you see here this card hashing at about 191, 192 uh, kilohash per second at an intensity of 17. Now on this shot we had the thread concurrency up around 12,000 and it was just throwing all kinds of errors. We backed that back down to 8192 with about 18 intensity and we ended up locking this card in at about 206 without hardware errors and that really seemed to be the best we could get out of this now the next set of cards that we look at in this shootout is the r9 270 these are some of my favorite cards from gigabyte and i say that because the cost is right on the money 179 dollars right now at micro center couple that with a very consistent 430 to 450 hash rate with a very limited amount of power usage and you got yourself a winner here in another later episode we're actually going to take six of these guys and put those in that new btc board from as rock cannot wait for that board to show up for i can put six of these cards on that i think it's a really good budget box and we'll see a good rate of return on that but for this video we went ahead and put two of these guys into our cool master reference box just to see what kind of return we'd get over a period of time and you know as we look here we had a few little hardware errors there uh, we had the concurrency up again uh, around 12,000 this card really likes around 10 640 or 8192 that 12,000 concurrency gets you a little bit of hardware errors, but it's still a pretty good return on these two cards at 433 apiece. Now, obviously, with a couple of these sandwiched next to each other, we, we're holding around 80, 85 to 88 Celsius on the one card and around 65 Celsius on the other. Now, looking at this table here, you can see the real good rate of return versus the power usage. Cheap card, good hash rate. Get a bunch of them. This will, again, like I said before, this will be in one of our budget boxes that we're going to be building and showing to you guys in a later episode of, you know, people that want to dive into it, but don't want to spend a ton of money. This is probably one of your best ratios right now for cost to hash rate. Now for the last card in this shootout, the R9 280X from Gigabyte, we thought we'd bring back another box that we had in a previous episode here. The only change that we made here is we put a thermal take 1200 watt PSU. Wanted to see, just dial in the settings if we can have this one PSU hold this box up. So for this first run, three cards, settings at 1060 core, 1500 memory. Now starting this just with the three cards, we start with just the system up, holding around 120 watts of power. We're at about 75 ambient temperature, and this thing's putting out about 53 decimals. Now enabling CG Miner here, we can see the power start to increase right away. Thing climbs from 600 to 940, starts to stabilize right, right around that 950, 960 rate. Now mind you, this is only a 1200 watt power supply and we only got three of these cards powered up. So we're looking right around 297 to 300 watts of power per card in this configuration. Zooming in here to look at the actual hash rate that we're putting out with that 1060 uh, 1500 core now taking a close-up of this the cards really are maintaining around that 730 to 735 mark They hold you know, this is an open-air case So they're gonna hold around that 75 Celsius at max and it's about 2100 total hash rate on this particular box with three cards. And we'll go ahead and pull this in a little closer if you can take a look at this. Three cards running, holding around 990 watts of power. Um, that's with everything cranked up. Now we were really determined to get this rig with this 1200 watt power supply running all four of these cards. So trying them with the uh, settings of 1060 core with 1500 memory proved that we were pushing around 1350, 1380 watts of power, which was killing the box after about 10 minutes of running as the fans spooled up and started cooling the cards off. So just adjusting the core, could we stabilize this rig 
So after just adjusting the core itself, we went ahead and tried this configuration and immediately you see the kilowatt shoot straight to about 1200 watts of power. We pull in and get a shot of the hashing. They're holding around mid 700s, but actually cycle down to about 675, 680 kilohash per second per card. And that's really indicative of bringing that core clock down. As we pan back and take a look at the kilowatt, you can see this rig starting to stabilize right there around that 1265. Now that's about 65 watts over what the recommended use of this power supply is. Now we've played with a ton of different settings here to see if we can maintain these four cards on that 1200 watt power supply. And really what it comes down to is not really exceeding the power supply by more than 100 watts. We pushed this thing at 1060 core and within five minutes it shut down. Uh, 1365 was about the much as much as that power supply could handle. Bringing that core down is absolutely vital. If you find your rig is unstable um, from, you know, if you think you're right there on that edge of the, the power supply, if you don't have a kilowatt, you want to adjust those core speeds. Yeah, you'll take a hit on hash, but it will pay dirt when it comes to your power supply. If I get any point out of this for you guys is to show one, a power supply can exceed its wattage and hold a computer up that's hashing. Not totally recommended, uh, not recommended, especially with some off-brand power supplies. I know uh, when you're building a rig, the cost is a very eccentric thing. Try to save the best, buy the best graphics card. Sometimes try to hedge on the power supply getting an off-brand, you know, 16 watt Hercules, something that, that other folks have used and seems to have pretty good success with, but more times than not on the few power supplies that we purchased that were off brand, I've had more trouble than it's worth. I usually stick to silver and gold rated power supplies and try to stay just under what their wattage is. Now in this rig, as uh, we're showing the video play here, this thing stabilized right around 1300 watts, which is right at about 100 watts. Now we let this go ahead and continue and run and uh, made it an entire night, no hiccups, no issues at all. It ran, the power supply was a little warm to the touch. Obviously it's running uh, a little over what it's rated. Now in closing, I wanted to bring up this table to kind of show you the rate of return essentially on what we had shown here. The power usage by card, the hash rate and return, and the cost. Put some of those figures up there for you to kind of see what was the best result. Now for our upcoming episode, we have one more hardware review. We're specifically looking at the MSI 270, kind of as a little sidebar. Got a few of those, really liking those. They're holding right over 460, 475 hash rate. Amazing. They're $189. Highly recommend them. But I wanted to dedicate our episode just to that. Um, building a value rig uh, for an entry level person wanting to come into it. Uh, get a couple of those guys for really cheap hardware. We put the whole entire thing together for you and show you really the rate of return. Of course, put your comments down there. We try to respond to everybody. Hope you guys stick with us, share us, tweet us, just get our word out there and uh, we'll bring some good content for you. The bits be trippin'. The bits be trippin'.